the indian education system has a very peculiar tapering phenomena the number of graduates gets reduced when we look for the numbers for the higher education if we further filter down to the students who take up science and technology research the number is still lower if we add the gender bias to it then you would be surprised to see that the number of women entering into science and technology is further reduced the number of women scientists known women scientists are quite less for example there is asima chatterjee who was the first uh, phd holder from uh, indian university anandi bai gopal though she was not a scientist but she is a physician first female uh, doctor pertaining to my field from the field of botany uh, a very famous cytogeneticist was uh, janaki ammal who is the first indian lady to probably have studied cytogenetics one is uh, kalpana chavla she was the she was one of the indians who actually reached the space and survived there for uh, many a days even uh, we had a couple of other women scientists too but uh, i am not remembering them at the moment if that is the case in the present day scenario can you imagine what it could be for women to pursue research in the pre independence era we are talking about a british raj before 1947 where even graduation was supposed to be a biggest achievement in the life span of a girl child once such ansang shiro in science is dr kamla bhagwat sohan one of the first doctorate conferred by cambridge university but has also contributed to the research in india for indians in a prophylic man kamla was born to the parents lakshmi bai and narayan rao bhagwat who himself was a proud recipient of gold medal at the prestigious indian institute of science in bangalore he was working in the area of organic chemistry and had nurtured both his daughters the elder one durga and the younger one kamla to follow their own paths kamla was born in a very educated family her father being a keen researcher of organic chemistry at the indian institute of science bangalore and her sister durga bhagwat known to the entire maharashtra eminent in the field she thought that kamala will continue her studies further and that prompted kamala to join the saint xavier's college in mumbai she pursued science and completed her bsc in science in flying colors in fact she stood first class first and was the recipient of satyavati samaldas prize of the bombay university when she applied for her admissions to indian institute of science the bhagwat family and kamla herself were shocked and surprised to discover that she has been rejected and the reason given by the then uh, very famous scientist sir c v raman who is also a nobel laureate we all know him was that he did not believe that women could make good scientists now you can imagine for a determined passionate girl like kamla what a shock this must have been but her nature was such that she wouldn't give up easily so she persisted persevered and she literally staged a dharna a satyagraha outside the director's office in the indian institute of science she relentlessly and kept on uh, you know doing her dharna till finally the director sir c v raman had to accept and relent and give her admission uh, this should have made her very happy but there was a little caveat when she was given the admission uh, there she was not admitted as a regular student she was admitted on probation and 
she was told that for one year director will look at how she performs will judge her on the basis of her sincerity ability to perform her hard work and then decide whether she can be admitted as a regular student this was not enough there was another uh, reason given uh, another clause that was put in her admission was that while she worked she would have to ensure that no other male students got disturbed in any possible way while she was at iisc and while she was working in the lab just imagine how insulting and disappointing it must have been to young kamla in iisc while she was studying for msc she found a guru who left a very lifelong impression on her dr shrinivasaiya of the department of biochemistry was a remarkable scientist he was pioneering microbiologist in india as a teacher he was very caring of his student but at the same time very demanding kamla worked very hard in his lab published good papers in a journals of good repute looking at the way kamla worked dr c v raman then never stopped any woman from entering iisc in fact he allowed few girl students to work in his own laboratory which then excelled later on in their own discipline she then decided to join hafkin institute of science in mumbai and continued her research work further soon she was invited to cambridge university in the uk and she decided to work under direct rector and she was going to work on neurotransmitters and enzymes she continued her work for a while and then she was invited and she received another wonderful fellowship which is called as the springer research fellowship and through this fellowship she got the opportunity to work with robert hill the nobel laureate and she pursued her experiments in photosynthesis and was working on plants highly interested in the field of biochemistry in the field of nutrition and also in the field wherein she could work on vitamins kamla went on working till such time that another scientist frederick hopkin he invited her and she became his student to continue her phd kamla worked on respiration in plants and that made her obtain the degree in phd and her work on plants and on cytochromes has got awards and many laurels and all over the world her work has been recognized and kamla probably was the first phd a lady phd from this area it is quite obvious that amazing opportunities awaited her in the uk the kind of research infrastructure that was available there as compared to what was available in pre independence india but when the motherland calls nothing can stop a patriot influenced by the mahatma and swayed by the anti colonial sentiment and the freedom struggle she left cambridge and returned to india the gandhian principles that she had embraced reflected throughout her life in india she served a brief stint in mumbai municipality and uh, following this she joined the nutrition research laboratory in kunur uh, the most important is all her research was context specific the first among that is the protein content of locally available foods she studied bombay duck which is the commonly consumed food a uh, fish by the mumbai population and double beans now continuing with the uh, proteins she specifically worked on trypsin inhibitors and thymines which interfered with protein utilization amongst a population which was energy and protein malnourished now the third the most important in her research is the nira research she studied the nutritive value of nira and the interest in uh, nira research was uh, fueled by none other than uh, dr rajender prasad who was the first president of free india she studied the micronutrient content of uh, nira which is the palm syrup 
although she communicated that uh, vitamin C was rich in palm syrup, uh, what was interesting in her observation is that the presence of sulfhydryl group in the palm syrup prevented oxidation of vitamin C. So um, that was a very important contribution. And uh, in continuation with that, she worked on um, a palm gur or the molasses, where uh, the work which was done by her and her students benefited the tribal population, specifically the pregnant women, the lactating mothers and children under five years. It is often observed that scientists who are deep into their research are mostly following a very bookish regime. Kamla, for that matter, was an exception in multiple ways. Kamla Bhai asked me, why are you late? I told her, my husband is short-tempered. He has got cardiac problems. The doctor has asked him to avoid oily and spicy foods. But he doesn't like the food without oil and spices. Kamla Bhai gave me tips and tricks to make the food tasty without adding oil and spices. I actually knew these tips since my childhood, but I got to know the science and nutrition behind it from Kamla Bai. We usually discussed family and personal things, and she always gave me a lot of tips for it. Kamla was one exception who has not only authored books on recipes or arts. However, the one thing which strikes me the most is her passion for sports. Uh, a multifaceted personality, Dr. Kamala Sohni had mastered the art of weaving, embroidery, cooking, as well as sports uh, throughout her career. She was very much passionate about tennis and she used to play tennis every evening. Even though she was under the research, she was working very hard for the research. Tennis is also her passion along with science. Post-retirement, for the next two decades, she served in the Consumer Guidance Society of India, which she was a founder member and later served as a chairperson. She designed a kit which women could use in the kitchen to test the purity of the food ingredients they buy from the market. That is to check whether there is any adulteration. Life of Dr. Kamla Bhagwat leaves us with more questions than answers. Is it fair that we don't even recognize their efforts or recognize them in a very meager fashion by conferring a couple of awards or giving away scholarships in their names? Their lives should be celebrated in a way that more and more women get a chance to explore themselves and exhibit their research in STEM or the science field by which we can celebrate the Leelawati's daughters as it has been mentioned in multiple books. The country expressed gratitude by conferring upon her the Rashtrapati Award that made even Derek Lister say proud of her for creating history. Kamla Bai wished that Durga Bai should accompany her to the award function at Delhi. But Durga Bai could not go with her for some reasons. Unfortunately, during the award function, she collapsed due to heart failure. Durga Bai suggested Kamla Bai's son to get her back to Mumbai for the rituals. She herself went to the airport to receive them and was waiting for the flight to arrive. It was sunset time. The flight was slowly landing. Looking at the sky, Durga Bai felt as if Kamla Bai had a bond with the universe and so is merged with the heavens above. 
नातं जुडलं होतं ते गेले की आता विश्वाकडे ॲज रिसर्चर्स अँड अकॅडमिशियन्स इन एनी फील्ड वी ऑफन कम्प्लेन अबाउट द लॅक ऑफ रिसोर्सेस अँड द कन्स्ट्रेन्स विच पोज चॅलेंजेस इन फर्दरिंग आर रिसर्च बट द टाईम पिरियड द डॉक्टर कमला कम्स फ्रॉम टेल्स अस द स्ट्रगल्स दॅट शी शुड हॅव फेस्ड इन अकॅडमिक्स अँड रिसर्च वॉट कमला डेट वॉज पेव्ड वे अँड ओपन द गेट्स ऑफ दिस प्रेस्टिजियस अँड फेमस रिसर्च इन्स्टिट्यूट विच वॉज एक्सक्लुसिव टिल देन टू a large number of research students who have followed the girl students women who have followed her path and have uh, got admission into iisc and now have done remarkable things all over the world but this definitely makes us ponder on the loss of energy to overcome such glass ceilings which could have been easily avoided we have permitted perhaps more fruitful research contributions there could have been more kamlas had there been less glass ceilings